this morning I told you already something about failure probabilities, uh, and uh, I, I will show you uh, uh, this afternoon uh, two examples. And um, I make a combination with uh, a, a project of uh, four uh, Saxion students, so they will, uh, in between, uh, uh, present uh, in a short presentation their project. <coughs> and um, what we are looking for are failure probabilities of compartment walls, but also failure probabilities not in only one dimensional direction, but also the adjoining constructions, etc. And uh, therefore, I want to use you as a kind of expert panel. So at the end of, uh, of this session, I would like to uh, ask you a couple of questions uh, with details, and uh, you can vote uh, about failure probability of those details. So I'm very curious. This, it's an ex experiment, so I don't know if the outcome really does make sense, but we, <laughs> we see that afterwards. <laughs> okay. Um, F, uh, a short introduction. I introduced myself already this morning, so you know me. And um, um, at uh, Saxon University of Applied Sciences, uh, Anne-Marie Weersink is a researcher, smart buildings. I don't know if I... Is, um, uh, is, is it the correct... Uh, uh, what your, your correct function, <laughs> okay, <laughs> and um, is, um, is uh, um, uh, guiding some, uh, some uh, students, uh, especially from uh, building technology, or I don't know exactly how this, the study is called in Saxion, but something like that, a bit, a bit building technology, architecture, and um, um, in this case, we have a mix of students uh, from uh, uh, forensic science and, uh, and uh, uh, building technology. Um, and, um, well, Anne-Marie is, is, is uh, guiding them for, for in, this, in this project. Um, yeah, the link to between uh, prevention and suppression, that's something that, uh, that makes the connection, I think, between the TU uh, Eindhoven and uh, uh, the Fire Service Academy here in Arnhem. And that's why we like each other, uh, so to say. Uh, we, uh, Fire Service Academy uh, is doing a lot of, well, a lot of, is doing experiments, and uh, we, we cannot do that in, uh, in Eindhoven because we are too small for that. Uh, but what we can do in Eindhoven is, is uh, simulation models and, and compare the simulation models with the experiments. So that's the interaction between the University of Technology Eindhoven and um, uh, the Fire Service Academy. And, uh, well, I already presented you some students' research this morning. <coughs> and um, uh, that's, uh, sometimes it's very practical research with, uh, with experiments. Uh, the, the fire container I already talked about this morning. Uh, but there were also students that were curious about material behavior in, in sandwich panels and uh, uh, build their own uh, very simple... Uh, uh, furnace to to uh, to do the experiments but with different temperatures, so they are very inventive. Uh, and of course, yeah, we do calculations or like like CFD simulations um, uh, with with uh, a, well localized fire at the left side and uh, fully developed fire at the right side, um, and then you can see the air exchange between uh, the inside and the outside and. Uh, um, this is, this is a very simple example, of course, uh, but it makes sense to do this, uh, this kind of simulations because also in experiments we sometimes encounter um, uh, underventilated fires, uh, localized fires that are already uh, uh, ventilation controlled, and, uh, although you, you don't expect it because the room is enough open. And then you see there, uh, that's, that's a, differ, uh, a difficulty with with uh, air pressure difference between outside and inside. Uh, and especially when uh, the fire is very rapidly developing, you get only gases flowing out of the compartment and that prevent oxygen from coming into the compartment. And then you have the risk of, uh, of an under underventilated fire. Um, well, fire safety in the Dutch building code uh, is, is uh, uh, in a lot of rules and regulations. Uh, uh, very practical rules and regulations like uh, the maximum size of a fire compartment, maximum walking distances, etc. Uh, but basically, uh, they serve two uh, main objectives personal safety of uh, building users and firefighters and uh, protection of uh, neighboring plots. I already mentioned that. So that means no protection in, uh, of environment and public space, no damage control, 
Well, and then I come to the case of the suction students because it, may, it, it might make sense to do something about damage control, especially when it comes to resilient buildings. So also no, no sustain, sustainability and, and robustness. So it means that, 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 of course, it makes sense to do something about sustainability, robustness or damage control, whatever, but then there are private objectives. They are not in the building code. You have to formulate it for, for yourself if you have a building where you want to do something about sustainability or damage control. Uh, in the pre over phase, the localized fire, then, uh, yeah, then there are... There, there are not many regulations in the building code about the pre flash over situations. Maybe the, the walking distance in the subcompartment uh, that's and, and, and the outflow capacity of a subcompartment uh, that has to do with escaping from a developing fire. Um, in large compartments, we are already used to uh, the A set R set comparison uh, available safe time. Uh, the room conditions uh, comparing with the required safe time uh, by the uh, simulation uh, of, of uh, evacuation. And you can do the same for offensive fire attack. Then it's personal safety of the firefighters, yeah. the fire service. Uh, most of the regulations are um, uh, related to post flashover fires, compartment fires. And in case of compartment fires, we say, well, um, uh, let's try to, to uh, uh, you, well, you, you, can, you can basically uh, recognize four risk systems, risk subsystems in the building code. Um, that's what I said this morning too. The first and the last one, this has, is related to safety of neighboring plots. This is related to personal safety. So the first and the last one are very directly related to the, ten, to the two main goals, main objectives of the building code. And the other two, the safety of load-bearing structure and the safety of, uh, of compartmentation uh, for uh, limiting uh, uh, spread of fire and smoke. You can see that as extra lines of defense. Uh, because it's easier when you have a compartment fire to guarantee the safety of escape and attack routes. That's more difficult when you have a building fire. It's easier when you have a compartment fire to guarantee the safety of the adjacent build, uh, buildings and plots it's more difficult when you have a building fire. That's, that's the meaning of a line of defense. So we can ask the question, is it possible to realize safe building without escape routes? Well, I asked you that question that morning, and you didn't know. And, uh, <laughs> and it's also a very, di I, 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 can, I imagine the answer is difficult because it's, it's um, um, it's not. Uh, it's, it's completely natural that you want to escape when there is a fire, um, but if you have no possibility for for escaping because you know, of because you're, well, you're not not enough mobile to do that, then um, um, then you have no other option. And as I stated this morning, that that is in theory it's possible, but then you have to realize very um, reliable lines of defense. And because there is no redundancy, that means that you have to rely completely on your lines of defense, on your compartmentation, on your load-bearing elements. And uh, uh, that means that the failure probability uh, should decrease. Mm -hmm. Without compartmentation? Well, I think you know the answer, without compartmentation. So I'm... I'm this line of this line of defense, I skipped this line of defense. Then is it possible to realize a safe building? Yeah, of course. Yeah, it, in general, it's possible to realize a, 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 a safe building when, uh, although you skip one line of defense, but you have to put more reliability on your other lines of defense. That's basically the message. So, if you have no compartmentation, yeah, then I have to uh, put put more effort in uh, safety of escape routes, safety of adjacent buildings, because when it's a large compartment, when it's on fire. Yeah, of course, the risk for, for uh, personal safety uh, increases, but also the risk of the adjacent plots increases. So it's possible, but you have to do something to reduce those risks. So yeah, you, you have to compensate uh, the lack of, uh, of uh, uh, a line of defense in the other risk subsystems. That's basically... So, of course, it's, uh, it's in, in, in basic, it's possible. You can also do something else instead of uh, compartmentation that is using a sprinkler installation, for instance. Yeah, then, then you are not using um, uh, uh, 
the, the compartmentation as, as a barrier for limiting a spectroscope, but you use the sprinkler for, uh, for limiting uh, the, the fire development. Okay, I have two examples, and uh, um, yeah, um, I think the, f the two examples of, of basically, to show you, we, we are used to uh, compare A set versus R set, uh, the available safe egress time versus the required safe egress time, that's for safe escaping, for personal safety. Um, but you can do the same for basically any other risk subsystem. When it comes to compartmentation, fire compartments are already uh, tried to show you this morning that, that we can also think in available safe time and required safe time. But then it's not a safe egress time. No, then it's a safe time according to the standard fire code. It's not, it, is, it isn't even real time. It's, it's, it's just a, a, a level of uh, reliability. Um, and the assessment is, well, what, what interval do we need to have uh, an acceptable failure probability? That's, that's, that's a, a difficult discussion because we can't find these answers in building codes. Uh, the first I um, uh, did in a master class at Saxion uh, December last year. So maybe you have already seen it. Uh, uh, I, I will try to, uh, <coughs> uh, well, not to make it too complicated in this uh, case. Um, I think, well, this is just an example. We did we did the, the calculations for the market hall in Rotterdam because that's uh, basically engineering work of, uh, of of another consulting office and. Uh, um, uh, it's uh, it's difficult when you come to different answers, so I think that's that's tricky. <laughs> I make I make another case of a large market hall, a simple, more simple case, and we compare the available safe egress time, um, uh, depending on smoke layer conditions, with the required safe egress time, depending on evacuation speed. Um, well, I have to define assessment criterions. For the ASAT, that's uh, in, in a stratified situation, the smoke free height must be uh, at least two and a half meters, and uh, the smoke layer temperature may not, uh, uh, be, may not increase above 200 degrees Celsius, and that's approximately two and a half kilowatt per square meters radiation flux. Uh, we can withstand that radiation flux for, well, uh, several minutes, let's say, uh, the, uh, the evacuation time. So it's uh, rather rough, rough criterions. Uh, and for the R set, uh, we want that all building occupants are outside, uh, because then we call that a safe situation. Not if only half is outside, no, 100% outside. Uh, this is the case, there is 10,000 square meters uh, in a rectangle, uh, very simple uh, geometry, seven meters high. It looks like that there is something like a smoke outlet system, but in, in, the, in the reference case, in, in the basic situation, we, there is no uh, sprinkler, there is no smoke outlet system, it's only the box itself. So there are no installations added to this. Um, what we did is uh, the conditions for the available safe egress time depends on uh, the, the development of the smoke layer, so that is related to the, the fuel a uniform distribution of fuel with a mean fire load, an average fire load of 900 megajoules per square meter and a rate of heat release density of 500 kilowatt per square meter. That's, that's rather high, but I think realistic for something like this, for, for this kind of retail function, shopping function. Uh, time constant, uh, fast, fast fire development, plume has gestalt and the cellulose fuel. So I think nothing strange about this, a rather normal normal uh, design fire. Um, external separation constructions we took uh, adiabatic, yeah, that means that there is no uh, uh, heat transfer from the gas mass to the constructions. So they are massless, without mass, and they are perfectly insulated. So no heat transfer through the construction to the outside. And that's, you could say, a worst case scenario because then all energy remains in the gas mass. Um, for the R set, uh, uniform distribution of people, uh, a maximum value of 4,000, a mean value of 3,000 people uh, uh, inside this market hall. Uh, normally, four exits available, because you could see that in, 
Uh, these are four entrance areas, so four exits basically. But you can imagine that in case of fire, one of the uh, 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 escape route is blocked. So uh, then, uh, uh, as, a, as, a, uh, as an average value, we, we think that three exits are, uh, exits are available. Walking speed, one meter per second. Not really relevant because we didn't do anything like a simulation here. We only take a look at the, uh, the outflow capacity of the, of the exits. And uh, that, is, that is mainly the bottleneck of uh, the evacuation speed. So uh, the walking speed inside the compartment is not a real issue in this case. Detection time, two minutes, and pre-movement time, two minutes. I think detection time you can discuss because if the market hall is full of people, maybe a detection time of zero, uh, immediate detection is acceptable. Okay. Well, you see some results of uh, a natural fire uh, um, in the, the market hall. You see that uh, this is the temperature of the hot layer and this is the temperature of the cold zone underneath. And then you see the uh, critical value, 200 degrees Celsius, well, ap approximately 14 minutes. So after 40 minutes, we have too much radiation flux, and that means that conditions are not acceptable anymore. And the second criterion was the smoke-free height. Uh, that must be higher than two and a half meter. Well, you cannot read it exactly here in this graph, but approximately, I think, 14 and a half, 15 minutes, something like that. So you see that the smoke layer temperature is, uh, is uh, the criterion that is, that is most important in this case. Uh, Oh, here you see the exact values, 14.6 minutes for uh, uh, the smoke-free height and 13.9 uh, minutes for the temperature. Um, the R set, uh, as I said, was, was two minutes detection time, two minutes pre-movement time, and then remained uh, 3.7 minutes movement time. So we added that to, to each other. Then the total R set is 7.7 .7 minutes, a very simple calculation very rough calculation. But to have an idea about uh, what time is available and what time is required. You see that's a rather a, a <coughs> large interval. So in this case, there's 6.2 minutes left. Uh, can we talk about safe evacuation? Is this, sa is this safe enough? If you think, yeah, yes, it's, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, you don't know for sure, but it, it, uh, it, is a, it is a rather large interval. So that's a good thing. Uh, we calculated that uh, uh, taking into account uncertainty of boundary conditions and uh, especially uncertainty in the pre flash over situation because this we are talking about the pre flash over situation. The post flash over situation is, of no, is no issue in this case. It's only the pre flash over situation. Um, and uh, then we have to calculate the failure probability under fire conditions, uh, that means the, the probability that the available safe time minus uh, the required safe time is lower than zero, is negative. That's failure, yeah, that's not acceptable. And we hope that that probability, uh, that is what, what stands here for, probability of failure uh, under fire conditions, that that probability is very small, then we have a safe situation. Well, what, what is very small? Well, that's difficult because uh, we have, we, well, we have in the building code, we have no reference about what is acceptable for, uh, 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 well, lethal victims for injuries, we, we don't know. Uh, but I found in the Euro code, uh, you, can something, you can, can find something about acceptable failure probability depending on the consequence class. And most buildings are consequence class two. And, uh, that you find for uh, fatalities, so, so, so uh, lethal victims, a uh, value of uh, well, 7.2 uh, uh, times uh, uh, minus 5. Uh, so that, that is a very low probability of failure of, of the structure. And uh, in case of fire and the fire conditions, you see that the probability rises a bit. Um, but that is um, when the structure fails, then you won't survive that. So that is for uh, fatalities, lethal victims. Um, if the smoke layer fails, you're not immediately dead. You have some, some kind of health damage uh, because the radiation flux is too high, for instance. Um, yeah, or may maybe if, if the, the smoke layer is too low, then it's uh, also, also toxic. Um, 
We found in, in, um, in uh, the Dutch uh, uh, statistics, uh, we found a more or less constant factor between fire injuries and fire fatalities the last 15 years. Uh, that factor is about 14.5. Um, so that means apparently it's from a societal point of view acceptable that we have 14.5 times more uh, injuries than lethalities and you know, fatalities. Um, so I, I put that factor on the difference between uh, lethality and injuries and uh, then I come to uh, an acceptable failure probability uh, in case of fire of the smoke layer of a, well, approximately 5%. So that then, then we have something like a boundary condition, something like an assessment criterion. Yeah, that, that makes sense. Um, this is um, uh, the failure probability uh, distribution, uh, uh, cumulative distribution. So you see on this axis the available safe time, uh, available safe egress time minus required safe egress time, and here you see the failure probability from, well, 0 to 50 percent. And when I want to check on uh, a value of, of 5%, that is this axis. Well, you see that I need something, well, here it says 7.3 minutes. So that's, that is needed. Well, that's a bit more than we had, because we, oh, sorry, we had, uh, what was the value that we had? 6.2 minutes. Yeah. Well, 6.2. It's close, you can see, but 6.2 is about 7.5%. Seven, seven uh, so that's, that exceeds the 5%. But it, it, well, it's close. Um, so basically, uh, this, uh, with the criterions that I defined, I need an interval between available safe equals time and required safe equals time of 7.3 minutes. Then you could say we have a safety level that is more or less the safety level that we, uh, that we that we want in our building code. Um, well, if you, uh, in this case, I, I, I needed to a, a little bit higher safety level. So you can think about active fire control, a sprinkler system. Uh, you can think about uh, uh, active smoke control, smoke outlet system, uh, because then that increases the smoke layer buffering. Uh, that's, that's a good thing. Uh, but you can also think about compartmentation. Well, that's not desirable for a market hall, but, but in basically also theoretically a, a good solution. Um, okay, wh what, what, we, what we did about A set, R set is, uh, well, is already well known. Well, maybe not the probabilistic part, yeah, but, but the basics, yeah, A set larger than R set. Well, we, we do a lot of projects. Yeah, with 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 uh, with that definition, um, we can do the same for uh, compartment walls, and that's what I already showed you uh, this morning. But that was a very simple compartment wall. Now I take a compartment wall of uh, a retail function, a supermarket. So that means that the fire load is a bit higher than for an office function or a dwelling or a res residential function. Uh, the available safe time depends on the very resistance of separation construction, so let's say 60 minutes, for instance, eh, according to the standard fire curve. And the required safe time depends on the thermal load by the natural fire. Um, well, here you see that um, uh, the thermal load, um, I, I have to translate the thermal load of a natural fire in the thermal load according to the standard fire curve because then I can compare the AST with the RST. Then I have the same dimension uh, th that's needed because and other otherwise a co comparison is not possible. Um, so I assume that the available safe time is 60 minutes, 60 minutes fire resistant uh, according to the standard fire curve for instance for the EI criterion and um, um, for the RST, the thermal load uh, well, that has to be translated in the thermal load according to the standard fire curve. Um, and uh, uh, also here, you can, you can imagine that, that we can calculate with average conditions, but it's also necessary to do a sensitivity analysis to have an idea about the, the uncertainty of your solution. Um, I take a, a simple box, again, 
that because a simple box is easy to model in the zone model. So that's <laughs> and modeling in, in, in zone modeling in, in C fast or in ozone means very fast modeling, very very fast calculation. So you can do a lot of uh, that's nice with the sen sen uh, sensitivity analysis. You can do a lot of calculations in a short time. A thousand square meters floor area, five meter high. Um, well, here you recognize a bit the same conditions because, well, we, uh, the first example was uh, a market hall. Now we have a supermarket, but that's more or less the same fire load, the same rate of heat release per unit area, time constant, blue model. So that's 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 comparable with the first case. Also, in this uh, situation, we took uh, external separation constructions uh, to be adiabatic and the entrance openings are, are open. Well, you find here uh, m maybe a bit of strange graph of the thermal load. This is, this is the natural fire. Well, that means um, pre-flash over and this is the flash over. And these are the post-flash over temperatures. Uh, uh, here we have also uh, uh, external flames, uh, but uh, the air resistance of the openings is is rather high, so that means that not all energy, uh, the the energy, the, the deficient of deficiency in the in in the rate of heat release because of lack of oxygen, is it, it's not completely um, uh, possible to to uh, uh, combust that energy in uh, in the external flame. So that means that we have something like uh, in between external flaming and and extended duration as a combustion model. Um, and if we translate this uh, natural curve in uh, the standard fire curve, this is the standard fire curve, then you see that we have the same amount of internal energy at, uh, well, what is it, 4,500 4, seconds, something like that. Um, and that is, that, is that is more than an hour fire resistance. Uh, that is 70.5 minutes standard fire curve. So you see in this case that, uh, well, we think this is, I, I don't know how I have to ask you this question, we think this is not safe enough. Uh, this is uh, too, too much negative interval uh, that the available safe time, so the available safe time for a thermal load is 60 minutes and the required safe time is 17.5 minutes. Um, that means that, uh, that, that's, that it's not safe enough, that we have to deal with high failure probabilities. Um, well, here also a sensitivity analysis, but in this case we are talking about a post flash over situation. And you can imagine that in a post flash over fire the time constant is of no importance. Uh, the height of the fire source is of no importance. What counts here is the fire load, uh, because fire load is the total amount of energy that's available, the rate of heat release and the opening factor. Uh, that are the two, that are the three. Uh, main important uh, parameters, um, um, boundary conditions for uh, the thermal load. Um, here we did also kind of sensitivity analysis and we and trans translated that in uh, a failure probability uh, uh, curve. Um, on uh, the horizontal axis, uh, the interval between available safe time and required safe time and on the vertical axis, uh, the failure probability under fire conditions. Uh, well, when we have here an interval of minus 10.5, that's something like here, and you see that I have a failure probability of uh, well, 67.5%. Uh, um, so this 60 minute separation construction is really not enough. That's, that's a very high failure probability. I want something like, well, at least less than 10%, maybe in, uh, in order of 5%, something like that. Then you see that, that I need an interval of, uh, well, approximately 40 minutes, something like that. So that means that, that um, I have to uh, make a, a fire resistant wall of 110. So let's say in practice of 120 minutes yeah, that that is needed in this case to be to speak of of some kind of reliability. Um, well, this is more or less comparable with this morning. Only this morning I had a more suitable example with a lower fire load. That you think, okay, 30 minutes, 30 minutes, 
manages that 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 uh, that, that that looks a bit like each other. Here you see that it that it makes sense to uh, really calculate the thermal load, and uh, uh, it makes sense that that uh, you make a different uh, fire uh, of different. Uh, fire resistance of separation constructions depending on thermal load and depending on the reliability that's needed for the separation construction. Um, here comes also the project of the, of the students of Saxion, because this is only one dimensional. Uh, we have to add the failure probabilities of the adjacent adjoining constructions uh, like adjoining walls, facades, floors, uh, roofs, etc. Um, and um, uh, uh, ducts uh, going through the wall, uh, doors in the wall, etc. Um, and that's the information that you needed too in your in your project. Or maybe it's uh, this is the moment. I think that that you have a short introduction about your project. What are what are you dealing with? That's yeah. I think that uh, we. Uh, I have to switch here. I think eh? for okay. Well, what is more acceptable, uh, fire in a building or a building on fire? And this question has led to our presentation today. And we will start with a short video about uh, a fire on the outside of a building. And I hope it will work. Yes. And as you can see, it will grow up to the top in just a short amount of time. Because we're now over one minute and, well, there's a lot of fire. So the video has shown that uh, the fire was started at the bottom of the hotel in Dubai, and just in a short amount of time, it just crawled its way up on the outside of the building through the cladding. Um, so fire spread through the cladding of a building is one of the many possible ways of a fire to expand in a building. Well, companies in industry have an ever-growing need for professionals who can collaborate successfully for people who can operate in interdisciplinary teams. Well, my name is Lisa van der Meulen. I am a student of forensic research, and during the Smart Solutions semester, I collaborate with Elsa Foppen and Michelle Land, also from forensic research. And we work together with Daniel Minnegal. He's from construction management, and this project is his uh, graduation project. Well, the Dutch building code is based on architectural measures to make a building fireproof and it sets uh, minimum requirements. The building code contains regulations uh, relating to the construction, use and demolition of buildings. The purpose of the fire safety uh, regulations in the building code are the prevention of victims and the prevention of fire expanding to other plots, but not to the preservation of the building itself. And the number of fire losses with, uh, of the number of fires with a loss of one million or more has increased in the past years, but the number of victims, however, has decreased in the past years. So we have less victims, but the total damage has become more. And this trend has, less, has led to our study to determine the return of investment on the fire safety of a building. This involves taking additional measures to improve the fire safety above the legal minimum level according to the uh, building code. So the big question is, um, is it worth to invest in additional me measurements, such as sprinkler installation, fire resistant walls, or is it at the end, when a fire starts in the building, just wasted money. <laughs> yeah. um, the approach. Uh, we want to use 
ozone because of the lot of diversity in the outcome. And with the diversity of outcome, we can uh, compare it to the standard fire curve. Um, the event tree, we made an event tree uh, to show the different scenarios. And the cost of benefit analyze is how we Um, is how we uh, determine the total loss of a uh, total amount of the total loss determined for a building at the minimum minimum level of the construction decision. Uh, this is one of the results we get with the ozone. Uh, we have a case we made with. 32% open windows. That's in our case the same as for uh, 64 uh, square meters. Uh, the red uh, the red line is the standard fire curve. Uh, the green one over here is the uh, mineral wool. So you also glass wool or rock wool. The uh, yellow uh, line is the cellulose. And the purple one is polystyrene. Um, this all, uh, all of these may in the are fine. This is all all right. Uh, for the standard plant curve, fire curve. Yeah, but it's only here in natural fire because of the fire load, the extra fire, the, the, the fire load of the separation construction itself. And now that we see difference in calculation, so it's not in the main fire load, is the variable fire load inside the compartment, uh, but uh, the separation construction in this case, depending on the material, is uh, also adding something to the fire load. That's what you see here in the natural fire load. And uh, you see rather low temperatures. Uh, that's because I think that the openings are very large in the old case. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, because here you see with less openings, you see higher temperatures, higher than the standard fire code. Uh, so I expect that in the first case you didn't have any external flames. I think that was controlled fire, but here we have, I think, uh, almost definitely a ventilation controlled fire uh, with a little, much higher fire load. It, that's nice on this yes. picture of you that you see that uh, the thermal load increases uh, enormous with the, uh, with the, with the, uh, with the decreasing opening factor. And this is the line of the, I think, the uh, the, the translation is the fire code in minutes. Uh, fire. So here you see that you have 90 minutes uh, standard fire code as a thermal load. Okay. Yes. Yes, and the wall in the case is uh, just 60 minutes standard fire resistance. <coughs> yeah, okay. Um, is this the comparison? I think this yeah. is the comparison between the 10 and the 2. Yeah, you see, you see really a huge difference. So, well, yeah. It's not, not directly, the, the, the area that you see here is not directly, trans, cannot directly translate that into a, a thermal load. Uh, uh, <laughs> 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 because it's not, not, not the internal energy, but it, it gives uh, well, an impression of, of the difference between the thermal load of uh, a fire that is fuel controlled with, uh, with a lot of openings and a fire that is ventilation controlled with uh, well, rather a small, small green fire because of lack of oxygen. Yes, we want to show here uh, the influence of the different insulation materials and the impact of the openings uh, in the walls. Yeah, but only the influence of different materials on the, on the fire yeah. load and therefore also on the thermal load. On yeah. the it doesn't say anything about the reaction and, and of, of, yeah. the, of the constructions uh, and, and 
that's a more difficult thing. Okay. Yes, and in the future, we are just at the middle of the project at this moment. So uh, we want to uh, look to different uh, firewalls of 30, 60, 90, 120 minutes by the group. And uh, we want to uh, look um, what the influence of a spring trade installation is and other uh, yeah, measurements. And okay. um, now Dania will tell something about the benefit of cost and life, if you will. Uh, Just wait, wait for the mic uh, for a second. I don't, I don't know. Know. Yeah, you need the mic for yeah. the video. Yeah. Hello, as I said, my name is uh, Daniel Minnegal. I'm a fourth year student uh, construction management. Uh, Let's talk about money. It's good to, I like to talk about money. Uh, it's good to take um, um, additional fire safety measures because of the safety of the people, but also because um, to maintain your, uh, your uh, company building and also your company. So that's my part of, of the, uh, of the uh, project to research what's, uh, how much money can you save when you do those additional safety measures. So in a nutshell, how much money does additional fire, fire safety measures cost and how much is it worth? It's a big difference. Something will cost money, but is it worth that money? If you take a, a safety measure of 50k, but eventually you will save 500k, it, it brings you money, so how much is it worth? Most people instinctively think uh, measures will pay off because of the lower risk, but does it? You can invest 50k, but if your risk is that low, you can ask yourself, do I want to invest it in fire safety measurements or maybe in something else? Because you can spend your money once, not twice. So. But how can you discover it? That, that's what my research is about, the big how. How can I translate risk into money? I already did some great work. Step one. <laughs> <laughs> first, um, the first thing I noticed is a company is not just a company. A company is, is bigger. A company is inside a building. You can have a trade company like a supermarket of, of root. Um, a trade company, uh, a car garage or uh, you can produce um, products, uh, paper, you can produce uh, products like bikes or whatever you want to produce. But if you're, if you, in a case of a fire, your building will lose. We can see that here. If you're facing a fire and your building is declared total loss, the insurance company compensates the damage for the building. So you got a fire, you it simply said, oh, we had a fire, I want a new building, okay, it's done. But the biggest problem is your company. Where would you, at what place do you want to produce your products? And it's not that simple, okay, I need a new machine because uh, when you make insulation materials or bikes, you can order just a machine at eBay. You have to order a machine and it will take maybe a year. Problem solved, but is it problem solved? There was the easy part, and I mean there was the easy part is to, um, to look 
only to the building. I need a new building, you buy a new building, okay. But your company is laying down. You can produce anything and you can't make money anymore. So mostly the company itself pays for the damage. The company will face for not being productive. That's the biggest problem. It means stagnation of business and stagnation of finals, financial income for an indefined period. As I said, you can build, build a building in six months, but when do you receive your machines or, or your new stock or whatever? That's the big question of my part of the investigation. How can you return uh, more investments and the uh, lower risk of uh, losing your company? As here is. Um, so we want to try lower the risk as much as possible, but it has a price. And what's the price? The price of the uh, of the uh, measure is, is building costs with measures, and the normal building cost that's your extra investment. So now we've got a reduction of the probability of total loss. That's the part of forensic. How much? lower of uh, with which measure is do I have uh, lower risk I can use a fire safety wall I can use sprinkler whatever I like they tell me okay when you use sprinkler your risk is uh, lowered by 200 percent maybe so I'm gonna calculate okay uh, this would this it will cost this measure will cost 50k and then I need to translate it to a uh, uh, fictive rendement in Dutch. My reports will show you the results in February, then, then um, I hope it will be done. <laughs> um, and if you're um, uh, interested in the, in the results of my documents, I laid down, I laid down a, a, a writing book with a pen, and then you can write your email address on it, or you can, of course, leave your business card, so I will take care of that you will all receive the document of the research. Thank you. Yeah, well, Daniel can only finish his report if he has, and, and also the forensic uh, students if they had the right information about failure probabilities because that's what's it all about if you um, don't know what's the failure probability of uh, uh, for instance a compartment wall you cannot start your financial calculations that doesn't make sense you need uh, the failure probability as an input um, and what did what did I so, uh, so, so what did we forget? Sorry, what did I forget? <laughs> the calculations before uh, the, uh, the the suction students uh, showed their project. I was only taking into account the one-dimensional problem you know, of heat transfer through a separation construction, a load a separation wall between two compartments. So I forgot there the adjoining separation constructions like <coughs> wall, like floors, like roof. Uh, and uh, openings in a separation construction, like doors, ducts, win uh, windows, etc. Um, that is very hard to calculate, especially to, to say something about failure probability. So that's why I, try, I thought, well, let's try if I can use your uh, expert judgment in this, in this case. What's the failure probability of those uh, adjoining constructions? What is the influence on the total failure probability? So, for this experiment, we um, uh, selected uh, six wall roof details. Um, the details here above are details with uh, more or less uncombustible uh, uh, building material. Uh, and uh, the details underneath are the details with um, uh, combustible uh, uh, material layers, uh, like with combustible insulation, but also roofing uh, combustible. Um, here we have details of, of a very lightweight construction, a steel roof. You can see that here, but here it's also a steel roof, and there it's too a steel roof. Um, and this is the most easy detail, I think. Here you see a compartment wall 
going through the roof. So that means that uh, uh, the roof is uh, connected to the compartment wall instead of the compartment wall here connected to the roof. In this case, without any, any provision, just uh, you see here the roof is going over uh, the compartment wall without any provision. And in this case, with a provision of uh, a kind of, uh, well, thermal barrier in the, in the, in the steel, uh, steel plate and uh, a barrier uh, uh, of uh, pebbles uh, uh, on the roof. Uh, and uh, in this case, with uh, combustible insulation, a kind of fire block uh, that, that makes two uh, separate uh, constructions of it. So that are the first six details, and then we also have uh, eight details about uh, the wall facade connection. And, uh, well, I, I show you them in the Kahoot quiz a bit bigger than this, or, but this is only for the overview. Uh, again, uh, non-combustible material, combustible building material, uh, a very thin uh, wall construction. This is the wall, and here you see the compartment wall. Uh, sorry, this is the facade. This is a compartment wall. Uh, here the compartment wall and the facade uh, connects to the compartment wall, and here is the facade along the compartment wall. Um, and the same with uh, a, a cavity construction, a cavity facade. Uh, with a compartment wall and without any provision, and here with a provision like a fire block or something like that. Um, so what we try to do is uh, 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 to give you four possible answers and just select, in, in, in your opinion, the most uh, suitable answer. Well, therefore, it's... Uh, I like to use your, your, your cell phone, if you have. Uh, if you have a cell phone, you can type in kahoot.it. Um, oh, it takes some time, I see. And it takes a lot of time before he switches. Uh. Well, maybe... <coughs> Okay. Um, so you can you have to uh, enter on your mobile phone uh, a PIN number, and uh, well, maybe I can't put off the. How do I do that? <laughs> I don't know where the where the sound is. <laughs> <laughs> it's a kind of music of <coughs> the 80s of, uh, of the former century when, when, with the start of the computer games. <laughs> okay, this pin code 327030. Uh, you enter a name, uh, a real name or a nickname or whatever, doesn't matter. Um, okay, 15. Yeah, is everyone who wants succeeded to get in, or yeah, someone trying? Yeah. Okay. Seventeen. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Wait. Well, we have to start. Um, okay. Fifteen questions. Uh, that means I have added one question. Uh, about your background, what is your professional background? That's the first question. All answers are correct, of course. It's <laughs> are you from fire service, um, a preventive assessor, uh, a consultant engineer, or a manufacturer supplier? Yeah, so that, that are the four answers you can choose. Do you have an idea about the background of the group who is voting about the details? <coughs> There is someone who has to think really 
deep about <laughs> where he belongs to. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Or he didn't have a connection anymore. That's also okay. possible. Okay. Okay. Uh, oh, most of you are fire servers, as you can see. Uh, well, the rest, uh, only one manufacturer here. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's clear what it is. <laughs> okay. A steel roof. Uh, the probability of flanking failure is only the flanking, and it's only probability, not the effect. Eh? You think, well, this is the barrier, and, and uh, this is a, a, a steel roof with, well, in this case, non combustible insulation, roofing. Uh, what's the failure probability? And the failure probability is that that um, uh, that that the, there is a probability that uh, I don't meet the criteria for a fire safe uh, con uh, construction. That means that there is too much energy flowing uh, through, in this case, flanking the wall. So you can select four uh, answers. Uh, uh, and zero means that there might be a failure probability of, of the direct way, but it's not, not, uh, there's no influence of the, the flanking way on, on uh, the total failure probability of the construction. <coughs> yeah, we have to think about it. Okay, yeah. Okay, I think there are really expected answers in this case. This is, this is a very, very simple case, I think. Uh, the next one, I think, is more or less the same, but now we have combustible material layers instead of uncombustible material layers, but uh, the rest, the detail is exactly the same. It's a fire wall that is uh, going through the roof and, uh, uh, well, that means a perfect barrier in this case. So what's the influence of uh, uh, the, 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 the flanking heat transfer uh, by, by the roof on the failure probability of the wall? Well, maybe there is a slight difference with the former detail, but maybe it's yeah. almost the same. That's, that's up to you. Yeah, that's, uh, okay, well, yeah, there is uh, shifted a bit to, uh, to uh, this answer, uh, you see, but okay. Okay, then we have uh, another roof detail, um, probability of flanking failure, but in this case, uh, a situation of non-combustible layers, but this is the steel plate, uh, the profiled steel plate that's, that's going over the compartment wall, so there is possible convection transport, yeah, that's possible. Uh, what's the failure probability by flanking, by flanking heat transfer along this uh, compartment wall? Yeah, that's question in this case. So I skipped the zero, but I made four <coughs> intervals. Uh, 0 to 25, 25 to 250, 50 to 75, and 75 to 100 percent. That are the four intervals that you can choose. Okay, well, you are, yeah, no. you see that, uh, that the probability is much higher, I should think, too. Uh, well, I think this is more or less the same detail, yeah, but now with combustible layers. Uh, that means that there is not only convective heat transport, but there is also a probability of combustion, uh, so heat production. Uh, that's, that's something different. So ma maybe you, you think, well, we have to value that in, uh, in the probability of the flanking heat transfer. Well, you were very, <laughs> very fast in this one. <laughs> it was not difficult, apparently. <laughs> Okay, uh, the another one, of the, yeah, here you see a kind of uh, uh, blocking transport in the steel plate. Uh, this is uncombustible insulation and, uh, uh, well, roofing with uh, pebbles on it. So this is a kind of a barrier that <coughs> is made in this uh, flanking heat transfer that might reduce the probability maybe. Sorry, what? The options. I changed the options. No, no, no. 0 to 25, 25 to 50, 
50 to 75, and 75 to 100, four intervals. The same, same. Yeah, the first one was, you could, in the first one you could also select zero, that's, that's correct, yeah. 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 No, but uh, I, I can only make four answers available in Kahoot, so that's, uh, yeah. okay. So well, you see mu much more spread, that's, that's interesting, an interesting detail. Uh, the last roof detail, uh, that's more or less the same as the former one, but now with combustible layers and, and a real fire block in it. So uh, here the same question, what's the influence of, uh, of uh, the flanking heat transfer along that compartment wall? Uh, so it looks a bit like the former detail. Again, the same four intervals, same four differences. Yeah, oh, okay, okay, <coughs> that's nice. So also a lit less spread than the former detail, that uh, I think uh, is remarkable. <laughs> okay, um, yeah, so then I have eight details left that are uh, facade details. So here you see this is a, a horizontal section, what you see here. So this is the firewall and here you have the facade. You see here the firewall going through the facade, and the facade is of non-combustible insulation, a very lightweight construction, let's say a kind of uh, uh, cladding material, insulation material, cladding material. So that's a kind of sandwich, sandwich element. So horizontal section, eh? I think that's clear, this, uh, this situation. Okay, uh, th this, um, apparently this is more difficult. You have, you have to take more time. And you see also a bit of spread in the answer, so we are not, uh, we not completely agree to each other on this, on this detail. So that that's means that's an interesting detail. And I think then the next one is interesting too, because it looks like the former detail, but in this case, you see here also that the firewall is going through the facade, so the facade connects to the firewall. Uh, but in this case, we have also a lightweight facade, kind of sandwich construction, with then in with with combustible material in it. So it's the detail is the same as the former detail, but the material is different. That's that's uh, that's the difference between the two details. Yeah, yeah, we, you, I expect, yeah, kind of same spread as in the former detail, that's, that's correct. So this is also a detail where we not completely agree with each other. And that means an interesting detail. Well, I think this one is uh, easier. Here you see the, the same detail as <coughs> from the compartment wall, but now you see that the facade is going along the compartment wall, and so there is no interruption and uh, in this case all made of non-combustible insulation, non-combustible material. So we only have the steel cladding that's going through um, and, and in between the steel cladding you have non-combustible insulation. I think this is also a bit difficult what you expect here. Failure probability. Yeah. yeah. I th yeah. You see that's <laughs> quite a large spread. <laughs> As you see, the details with, with we show a lot of spread in, in the results. That are the most interesting details. Uh, we have to uh, we have to investigate them more thoroughly. Yeah. Well, you can expect now the same detail, but now made of uh, uh, a combustible material layers. So the steel cladding, combustible uh, insulation material, steel cladding, um, going along the compartment wall. Yeah. Yeah, well, this is <laughs> this was easy. <laughs> Here we agree uh, with each other. Okay. Okay, uh, number five of uh, 
a facade detail. This is more difficult because now we have a cavity in the facade. You can see it here. We have non-combustible material layers, uh, but a cavity in the facade. And here you see the firewall, and the firewall uh, uh, stops at the facade. So it's connecting to the facade. The facade is uh, going along the firewall. Um, well, yeah, here you have different kinds of transports. Uh, conduction transport uh, by, by cladding or by material, but also maybe convection transport uh, through the cavity. Uh, the cavity. So that I, I, I am curious about what your opinion is about this detail. Yeah, you see here too a lot of spread in uh, in your expert opinion. Yeah. Yeah, I can imagine that because the cavity makes it more complex, and. Uh, introduces also lots of uncertainties. Uh, so that's, that's, that's difficult. Here you have the same construction, but now with combustible material layers. Uh, yeah, the, maybe a bit, bit <laughs> a suggestion about flame spread, but, but OK. It, it's just, just, to, just to show you that it's combustible. Well, <laughs> more <laughs> that's, that's the only meaning of the flames. Uh, so. <laughs> uh, OK, yeah, you, you see a large failure probability. I agree on that. I think that that was the answer that I expected in that case. Uh, well, almost the last one that I want to go. This is uh, also the cavity uh, facade, uh, non-combustible material. Uh, the firewall stops at the facade, but then we have some kind of fire block. That means blocking both conduction and convection, and below both kind of heat transports. So. I am curious about how effective that fire block is, in your opinion. <coughs> yeah, okay. It, uh, it, there is some efficiency, you can see that in the answers, but you are still not really convinced uh, that, that, uh, that there is a large spread on the, uh, in the answers. Okay, then the last question, the last detail is uh, uh, more or less the same detail as we had now, but, but now here you see again the fire block uh, and the compartment wall and uh, here the facade with the cavity, but now with combustible material. And of course the fire block is a block that is non-combustible. Yeah. Non-combustible uh, and uh, the meaning of the fire block is to prevent both conduction and convection uh, in the cavity. So how effective? Yeah, well, here you see that you think it's less effective but, but because of the, the combustible in the material layers, I think, than uh, the former detail. So that's, that's very nice. I'm also uh, curious of if the group Afterwards, we'll give the same answers. Uh, I, I would like to give you also your opinions, your answers for both groups, and uh, I su suggest that we do that via the I uh, by the IFE, IFE website. Uh, maybe from I, I have to um, uh, discuss that with them, but I think that's okay. That's no problem to uh, to uh, give the answers uh, on via the website. Okay, well, get results. Well, <laughs> I would say then. <laughs> well, that's uh, this is only the score results. That's not interesting because you you cannot you cannot gain anything here. You see that the the one who is on top, Tom, means uh, he has no points, but no one has. <laughs> <laughs> but that means that he was quickest in answering. He had he had less time. The, 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 so that's that's why he is on top. He's measuring also the time. Okay, well, I thank you for your expert opinion, your expert judgment, uh, and uh, uh, we, well, we, we see if there is also a connection with your background about your opinion, and we do that for the second group too. That, that would be nice, interesting, and I hope that we uh, somehow we can use those, uh, this expert judgment also in, for instance, the case of the suction students, but also in a more generic way uh, for calculating failure probabilities of compartment walls uh, uh, taking into account uh, the adjoining constructions. Okay. Do you have any questions? Because we have two minutes left, I guess. <laughs> okay. Please save the results. Yeah.
Yeah, I think save the results is saving the score. I think I, I, I can all I can always uh, get uh, in in an Excel sheet the results back. So that's that's uh, <laughs> okay. Direct download. I think this is the score that you get uh, that you get here. Okay, I don't know when when does the next workshop start? Is that uh, at three, or is there a, is there a, a coffee break in between? Yeah, three o'clock. Oh, so we, I, I, oh, so you have no coffee break left now. <laughs> oh, the stop. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. temperature and a warm test with low temperature that would be better but well that's how the system is so <laughs> I cannot change that no, that no, 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 but standards. The, the conclusion is the same yeah. in this case your temperature are higher than yeah. standard curves and yeah. in this case they will say okay you're not so good with standard curvature because in, in practice in yeah. reality, you have higher temperature yeah. so yeah. Yeah, the difference is that you don't know exactly the material behavior with that high temperature as compared to the standard curve. Yes, that's, that's, you that's have true. The that's true. Yeah. Where you have tested. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah. 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 I would yeah. be more confident if the temperature of the reef fire is lower than the standard curves, even if the duration is wrong. Yeah, yeah. That I agree. Safe. That that gives that gives more confidence, more yeah. safety. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah, this is this is uh, that. Yeah, you're right. That that high temperatures means that, that we don't know exactly the material behavior and that, that, that can influence the fire resistance a lot. Yeah. <coughs> uh, yeah, that's true. Yeah. Sorry, I, I cannot solve all that, but that's, that's, a, that's a, right, yeah, a right remark. Okay, thank you. Other questions? No? Okay. Did you like it, the, 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 the details? Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, <laughs> nice. Nice job. Yeah. Yeah, it's just an experiment, but I think, well, it's, it's nice to do that experiment just to see what your opinion is, and maybe we can use it, so that it will be, yeah, it be nice. Okay, then uh, we go to the break, I guess. Yeah, yeah thank you. Thank you.